Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live webinar brought to you by the Asian Seller and Jason Tay Online. I am Megla Bhardwaj, your host, and I'm joined by Jason Tay, who's one of uh, the top, uh, top Amazon sellers in Singapore, and also Geraldine from Amazon. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hi. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Thanks, Megla. Thank uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Geraldine and Jason, for joining us today. And Geraldine, uh, first of all, before we start, I want to say a huge thank you to the team here in Singapore. You guys have been so supportive of, you know, for the sellers over here, and you've been just doing so much. I've, I've been watching your live webinars on your own Facebook group as well. So I just want to say thank you very much for all the support that you're giving to the community. And thank you for doing this webinar today. I'm sure it's going to be helping a lot of people. You know, there are questions about selling on Amazon Singapore. Okay, so I yeah. want to go over um, the agenda real quick. So what we want to do first is uh, Geraldine will share a presentation and she will give everyone an overview of how you can start selling on the Amazon Singapore marketplace. And um, we have received hundreds of questions from all of you. We've gone through all of the questions. And most of the questions are going to be addressed in Geraldine's presentation. And uh, we've also selected some questions to answer at the end of uh, or after Geraldine's presentation. So we will be taking those questions uh, later. So um, wait until uh, the end of Geraldine's presentation and after we've addressed you know, the additional questions. And if you do have any questions that have not been addressed in the presentation and have not been addressed um, in, in the Q&A, then you can type in your questions and uh, Geraldine will be able to answer them as, uh, as well. So yep. um, I just want to remind everyone that um, we are only going to talk about selling on the Amazon Singapore marketplace. We are not going to be addressing any other technical issues or selling on any other marketplaces. So just be very cautious of that. Please only ask questions related to selling on the Amazon Singapore marketplace. All right, so um, let's get started. So Geraldine, I'm going to share your screen here and you can um, dive right into your presentation. So Jason and I are going to go backstage and we're going to hand things over to you. So take it away from here, Geraldine. Thank you, Megla. So maybe before I start my presentation, I will give a brief introduction of myself. So I'm Geraldine and I am an account manager from Amazon Singapore. So we actually provide account management support for sellers like you. So if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us and we will always be here to help you in your selling journey on Amazon. So maybe for today's agenda, I will be sharing with you about a brief introduction on Singapore's marketplace, as well as why you should start selling in Amazon Singapore, as well as how you can get started selling in the Singapore marketplace as well. So following which I will be covering all of the questions in the live Q&A with Megla and Jason. Yeah, so maybe a brief introduction of Singapore in this country here. We have a population of 5.6 million people and we speak four different languages. So we are a multi-racial and multicultural country and um, the four languages are English, Chinese, Malay and Tamil. But our main language is actually English. So if you are worried about what the product listing details uh, language should be, it's actually an English language. So you don't have to worry about that. And other than that, in Singapore, we actually have a very high internet penetration rate of 90%. And there's a very strong e-commerce presence as well. So diving deeper into this trend, about 60% of the Singaporeans actually shop online at least once a month. And um, there are increasing uh, trends of Singaporeans buying more essential items online, such as grocery products. And as we can see from the current COVID-19 situation, more and more people are actually choosing to shop online, especially uh, since they, there is greater convenience and they would like to avoid any long crowds or um, queues as well. So these are some of the rising trends that we see in Singapore today and essentials and shopping online is definitely a rising e-commerce trend here. So to understand more about the shopping behavior of Singaporeans in uh, Singapore today, a lot of them are actually very drawn to shopping online when they have got free shipping and being able to find unique products that are actually hard to find. So other than that, um, low shipping costs 
and as well as offering fast delivery and secure payment are uh, highly preferred among uh, Singaporeans when they shop as well. So do keep this slide in mind because you'll be able to understand how Amazon's features actually link back to all of these factors that drive online shopping, as you can see from um, the free one-day shipping that we offer for Prime members in Amazon. So these are some of the top drivers in Singapore. So to give you a brief overview of um, Amazon's presence in Singapore, we have actually launched Prime now about three years ago in 2017. And back then, we also have launched Prime membership. And we had our first Prime Day in 2018. So for the Singapore marketplace, we it was actually recently launched in October last year. However, even though we have just launched, we already have hundreds of thousands of Prime members in Singapore, which is one of the highest household penetration rate of Prime members around the world. And also, I understand that many sellers may have concerns that um, Singapore marketplace may be a very small marketplace because we are a small country. However, um, and like we are actually very new here in the e-commerce presence. However, there is already a very high brand awareness and strong reputation of Amazon in Singapore. And in fact, Singapore is world's third biggest export destination for Amazon.com. So, yep. So at this point of launch, these are some of the ca uh, available categories. These are all of the available categories, actually, that um, you can actually launch your products in. Currently, we do not actually have soft lines like fashion launched yet. However, um, do, however, this will eventually be launched soon. And do note that if you are listing any products under electronics that or any um, beauty or health, health supplements products that are there are certain product restrictions under these categories. So for instance, under electronics, if you are an international seller, do take note that the electrical voltage in Singapore is 230 and there are 33 controlled goods under electronics where um, it is actually regulated that uh, it is a regulation under uh, Enterprise Singapore that you will have to register for a safety mark logo. So what is the safety mark logo? It is um, actually this logo that help consumers and suppliers identify registered controlled goods and you, you require a Singapore entity to register for the safety mark. So these are actually for 33 controlled goods that you can easily search for and it's regulated by Enterprise Singapore. So do also note that uh, selling partners like you, if you are looking to sell products in the automotive category, you will need to obtain um, category approval for that as well. So question is, why launch on Amazon Singapore now? So I think the most, um, the best thing right now is that the professional monthly fee is actually waived all the way to the end of the year. So um, the professional monthly fee is usually $29.90. So um, it's currently waived. So you do not actually have to pay any money to set up a selling account and list your products. Additionally, you will actually get free account management support from the team here in Amazon Singapore. And in terms of account management support, we will be here in uh, to help you in your onboarding. In terms of um, listing creations and any advice to help you optimize your sales. And other than that, we actually have an ongoing promotion whereby if you are an FBA seller, you get free deals exposure, such as running for deals for deal of the day, lightning deal or best deal. So running for deals will definitely help you to obtain more traffic and conversion for your sales and it is all free now so it is actually a very good thing and lastly we already have FBA launched in Singapore so if you are an international seller and you are um, concerned if there's FBA yes we already have FBA in Singapore so it is a very very good time for you to launch now because um all of these fees, most of these fees for deals as well as professional monthly fee is waived all the way till the end of the year. And like what I mentioned earlier, so we actually get free deals exposure and the fee is waived till 30th of June. So we do have these three different deal types on Amazon Singapore as well. So you get, um, with currently it's all a free deals exposure compared to in the US marketplace where you may have to pay up to USD 600 dollars 
for a six hours lightning deal slot. So these are some of the current promotions and I think they are very good, especially for new sellers. As if you are trying to get started in a new marketplace and you can use deals to actually drive traffic to your products. And maybe moving on to fees, when you sell a product, a referral fee of 6 to 10% is actually, you are subjected to this referral fee depending on the product category that you are selling. So I believe that this referral fee is actually much lower than the US marketplace. If you are selling in Amazon.com, this is definitely a plus point for you as well. So maybe diving deeper into a comparison on the different referral fees, you can see that uh, most of the fees here are definitely lower than uh, Amazon.com. So if you would like to get a clearer breakdown, you can visit our website uh, based on this link here. And maybe um, I can just discuss more about the holiday season calendar here in Singapore. We definitely celebrate various events and holidays such as Hari Raya and Deepavali, which is uh, different from like the US marketplace. And these uh, and but similarly, the key dates that you should take note of are like Prime Day, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday. So these are the key holiday event periods where the shopping is usually the peak. And to ensure that your products are actually ready during these peak periods and it is important to keep track of the inventory that you have. So if you are using FBA, do ensure that you send in your products to the fulfillment center at least maybe one month before the event uh, key event date. And uh, right now, it's definitely a very good time for you to uh, Start selling your products, understand the Singapore's marketplace, understand what are some of your fast moving products. And eventually during these um, sh key shopping period, like during Q4, you can actually send in more of your uh, fast moving products into the fulfillment center. So launching now will give you a better understanding of um, what are your best selling products. So moving on to product selection and um, like what are some of the top categories, I believe that many sellers are excited to know. So um, I will actually share with you briefly what are some of the uh, categories that you can search for, that you can source for. But uh, do note that, you know, uh, more detailed selection guidance will actually be shared with you at the end of the webinar as well. So in here, you can see that these are the top product categories and traffic um, as well with with top sales as well as top traffic. So under hotlines, you can identify that toys are very popular on the Singapore marketplace. And under baby products for consumables, you know many uh, many parents actually shop online on the Singapore marketplace because of increasing convenience. And these are some categories that you can look out for. So maybe I will just um, dive into one category specifically because I understand that many of you may be interested to sell in the home category. So from Market Research Insights, we actually find that rising subcategories are like smart home segments, probably due to the Smart Nation initiatives in Singapore. And as more consumers place greater um, priority in their health and convenience um, with the fast pace of lifestyle that we have currently, a lot of home appliances are actually very popular as well. So likewise, under home organization, you know, with the rising trend of uh, Marie Kondo and uh, having a neat home from like Japanese culture, these are some of the top uh, a lot of home organization products are actually top subcategories under home. So um, these are some guidelines that you can follow, but do understand that you do not have to restrict yourself to just source for these products when you actually refer to the selection guidance that we usually share with our selling partners. So if you are searching for, uh, if you want a better understanding on what are the updated bestsellers and you want to check it regularly, you can always check our bestsellers website and it is actually updated hourly with movers and shakers and also what are some of the top 
uh, maybe 100 products that are doing well in specific categories as well. So I would highly recommend you to check out this page. So many of you may ask, um, so what are the tools and how can I get started in Amazon? Like what will help me in my sales on Singapore Marketplace? So um, a lot of you will also be wondering, is FBA available in Singapore? So answer is yes, FBA is available in Singapore. And we actually have a, we have a fulfillment center here. So maybe for new sellers, I will briefly cover with you what FBA is beneficial to you for. So it actually refers to fulfillment by Amazon and it benefits you greatly in scaling your business in Amazon. So when you adopt FBA, you do not have to worry about all of your fulfillment because uh, Amazon will be taking care of this for you and you can outsource your storage, customer service, to Amazon because um, we will be actually helping you through in this as well. So it will definitely be useful in scaling your business. And another plus point of FBA is that FBA products will be eligible for the free one day domestic shipping for Prime members. So in Singapore, Prime membership costs only $2.99 Sing dollars, which is uh, much cheaper than the US marketplace. And with that, we actually have got hundreds of thousands of Prime members in Singapore. And um, definitely, if you use FBA, you will be eligible for the free one. Your products will be eligible for the free one day shipping. And this helps to attract more customers and buyers and eventually increase conversion rate for your sales as well. So in terms of the fees, it ranges from $2.70 to $13.59, depending on your product size. As for storage fee, it's $12.84 per cubic meter per month throughout the entire year, even during the Q4 shopping period. Now, like what I covered previously, the best thing, or maybe a very good thing about running, uh, about being an FBA seller is that you get free deals exposure. And I really believe that um, this is a very good place of being on deals on the Today's Deals page to get exposure and to get traffic for your products, especially if you are listing like a new listings or if you are a new seller getting started because uh, many people would actually visit the deals page. So to summarize, these are all of the related fees for the monthly subscription fee. It's actually waived all the way to the end of the year. So if you are a seller setting up your account, you do not actually have to pay any amount to to create your account. And secondly, you will only have to pay a referral fee of 6 to 10% when you make a sale, which is lower than the US marketplace. And if you're an FBA seller, you get free deals exposure if um, you adopt FBA. So how can you start selling on Amazon and how can you register your account? So if you are a new seller, you can visit our website, services.amazon.sg, and uh, you can click on the Sign Up Now banner after which you will actually be directed to the, to the uh, Seller Central page, Singapore Seller Central page. So if you are already an existing Amazon seller selling in the US marketplace, there is another option for you to link your existing selling account. So all you have to do is to log into your Seller Central account, select Sell Globally, under the inventory drop down menu and create your account under Singapore, Asia Pacific. And however, even if you are a new seller, um, you will still have to go through seller identity verification, both new and existing sellers. So similarly, you will have to upload your identity documents, either a passport document or a driver's license. However, um, a passport document is usually preferred. So make sure that your documents are not expired and um, any, any of the details that you state or indicate on Seller Central should match all of the documents that are provided, should match all of your documents in your passport. So for instance, for your full name and last, for your first name and last name, make sure that it matches the details on Seller Central. And your identity documents must be in one of these following languages. If not, do provide a translation for that. And another thing that um, we 
usually identify is a common mistake among uh, many registrants going through identity verification is that you miss out the signature from your passport. So do take note of that as well. So if your signature page is separated from your passport identity detail page, do combine the documents into one single PDF and upload it on Seller Central. So next for your bank account statement as well as your credit card statement, please make sure that your documents actually have transactions that are dated within the past 90 days. And make sure that it is in color and do not submit a screenshot of that. Other than that, do not actually crop out any of your bank account statement because uh, we want to make sure that the document is accurate. However, you can hide all of your uh, bank amounts if you wish. And similarly, make sure that your bank account statement is in one of these following languages as well. So after your account has been successfully registered, it will usually take about two business days for the seller identity verification team to verify your documents. So after it has been full successfully registered, you will be able to um, add your listings. So if you are already an existing Amazon seller, good news for you, you can actually port over all of your current listing details as well as reviews from the US marketplace over to the SG marketplace. And there are two different options for you to do that. So firstly, you can work with your account manager who will send you this template and you will state all of your SKUs, ASINs, prices, as well as um, fulfillment method and quantity that you would like to port over to um, Amazon.sg. And these will usually take uh, maybe three to four business days, depending on the number of um, cases that the internal teams have to handle. And another option that you have is to build international listings. So for building international listings, you can actually do it under the sell globally function. And you can sync your listings from US marketplace to Singapore marketplace. And usually it takes up to maybe four hours before, um, once you have successfully created a connection between the two different marketplaces. So these are two options for you. And it's a very good thing for existing sellers because you wouldn't be starting from scratch even if you are selling in a new marketplace because your listing details as well as your reviews will be ported over. So I also understand that many international sellers are concerned with how you can ship your products to Singapore and whether you need to register for a business entity in Singapore and how do taxes actually work in Singapore. So maybe in brief, we actually have got goods and services tax uh, in Singapore, also known as GST. So it is not a requirement to be GST registered in Singapore before you can sell on Amazon. However, do take note of the GST laws that may apply as well. And if you are unsure of any obligations, do consult um, your tax advisor as well. So um, regarding registering for GST, it is um, not compulsory. However, it is only compulsory if your to the total value of your supplies of goods made in Singapore exceeds Singapore dollars 1 million in a calendar year. Otherwise, it is voluntary for you to register for GST in Singapore. So um, next, moving on to customs as well as import regulations. So in when before you ship your products to Singapore, you must engage in IOR, also known as importer of record, when importing goods to Singapore, especially when the total value of your goods exceeds 400 Singapore dollars. So the IOR is actually responsible in ensuring that your shipment has been imported successfully to Singapore and they will be um, in charge of filing any legally required documents and paying any assessed import duties and taxes as well. So do take note that as long as the total value of your products, which includes the cost of your good, insurance, as well as shipping costs, exceeds $400, you will have to engage an IOR service for that. And take note that if you are using FBA, Amazon will not serve as an IOR for any shipments. And we do actually have a list of IOR service providers, as well as 
logistics um, service providers that you can engage if you are shipping from overseas to Singapore. So you can check out our website services.amazon.sg slash resources slash service providers. So on this page itself, you can actually refer to um, a list of a whole list of service providers that you can engage to for IOR service. And there are actually contact details over there as well. So you can reach out to them and understand how the process works as well as um, how much it actually costs. And maybe moving on to any additional regulations or restrictions. If you are still unsure of whether um, what, are the, what are the customs regulations, you can always check out customs.gov.sg and additionally I highly recommend you to um, check if any of your products that you're looking to sell on Amazon are actually prohibited items. So for example in Singapore chewing gum is actually a prohibited item so do check out customs.gov.sg to make sure uh, before you actually ship any products to Singapore. And also there, there are additional regulations as well as restrictions on certain product categories as well. So let's say if you are um, looking to sell any beauty, health supplements, products, make sure that they actually meet the guidelines or actually manufactured by a source approved by health science authorities. And if you are selling any food products, make sure that they meet the guidelines set out by Singapore Food Agency. And lastly, um, there are if you are selling electronic goods, make sure that they meet the Singapore's voltage, which is 230 voltage, and um, make sure that if, uh, do check out if any of your products are the 33 controlled goods, because if you are sending these 33 controlled goods that are regulated by Enterprise Singapore to the Fulfillment Centre, you will have to provide a safety mark logo for that as well. So these are some of the useful links. And at the end of the webinar, we will actually share, I think, I believe Magla will share this about this um, links with you as well. So you can refer to that and make sure that your products actually meet all the guidelines that are set out by the Singapore government. So um, with that, I have come to the end of, of my presentation and my sharing on Amazon Singapore. So you can visit our website, services.amazon.sg, if you need further details on the Singapore marketplace or follow us on our Facebook page. If you have further questions or if you are unable to reach out to your account managers, you can write to us at this email address and we will walk you through. Yep, so thank you. Okay, awesome. Geraldine, that was such a great overview. Thank you so much for that. It was very comprehensive and you covered so much um, uh, ground over there. Okay, so um, let's remove your slides now. So yep. now what yep. we'll do is we'll take some of the questions that we've got from uh, people who signed up initially. And, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take some questions with you. And then after that, we'll also take, uh, Jason will also be answering some questions. So uh, to all of you listening, um, Geraldine is going to be answering some questions for the next 15, 20 minutes. And then Geraldine uh, will will um, drop off. And then Jason and I will stay on and we'll continue the conversation and we'll continue to answer any other questions that you guys might have. And I'm also going to bring on Alvin uh, from the Amazon team as well um, over here to help Geraldine with some of the questions in case they are. Hi, Alvin. Can you hear yeah, us? Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. So it's <laughs> great to have to join you guys. Yep, sure. Let's get started with the Q and A. I think we have very exciting okay. questions that from the from from the uh, participants. Yep, let's go. Yeah, there were so many questions. <laughs> okay, great. So I'm gonna display the questions on the screen now. So this is the first question for you, Geraldine. Do you have any delays with shipping non-essential products to customers? All right, so to answer this question, currently in Singapore, we do not have any delays with that. So even if you are shipping any uh, non-essential products, feel free to send it to the Fulfillment Center because there are no delays on our end currently. Okay, great. Okay, do you have any inbound shipping restrictions, like a 50 units limit? Yep, so there are different shipping restrictions for the different size of the product. So for standard size products, the shipping restriction is 250 units and for oversized, it's zero units. However, if you want to expand your inventory uh, limit, you can reach out to your account managers and we will expand it for you. 
Okay. So it's two fifty and zero. Two fifty. Okay. Cool. Uh, will Amazon SG ship to other Southeast Asian countries? Right. So currently, for Amazon SG, it is only shipping to Singapore registered addresses. So we are only shipping within Singapore itself and shipping only to Singapore customers. So we are not currently shipping to other Southeast Asia countries. Okay. Okay. What are the payment terms? So this was a very generic kind of question. What What do you want to say to this? Yeah, I think the. The seller is probably asking, um, what are the different payment options that they have if they sell on Amazon Singapore? So maybe similar to the US marketplace, you there are a few options for you. Firstly, you can create your bank accounts, um, in Singapore. However, if you are an international seller, you can actually use um third party payment service providers like Payoneer or uh, Lian Pay or Ping Pong Pay. So. Um, these are some of the options, and also if you are if you are selling in the country, if you are in the country with your currency which is supported by Amazon's currency converter like USD, you can use your bank account to receive payments from Amazon Singapore as well. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'd like to jump in as well. So maybe I'd like to expand the term. Uh, this this question a bit. So some of the questions that I have from my sellers is when would Amazon disperse the payment to the seller? So maybe perhaps payment term is also how how Amazon mm -hmm. how regular Amazon disperse. So Amazon disperse on a two weeks basis. So the amount will be reflected in your seller account. But uh, we work on a two weeks dis uh display uh, disbursement basis. So every two week we will just transfer it to your deposit account. So hope that helps to clarify this question as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, guys watching, if you have any more questions, now's the time to type them in. We're going to run through a few more questions over here, and then we'll take questions from the audience if they have not already been covered in the presentation. Okay, so next question. What is the advantage and disadvantage selling on Singapore Amazon as compared to Amazon US? Okay, so um, maybe I'll cover the disadvantage first. So I think a lot of... Uh, you guys will already know that a Singapore marketplace is actually smaller than the Amazon US marketplace because Singapore is indeed a smaller country. However, um, even with that, we already have one of the highest household penetration rate for prime members. So that is something that um, you can still consider as well. But maybe moving on to the advantages. You know, the Singapore marketplace is actually, um, there are all of the fee waivers right now. So if you are a new seller, you know, you can run deals for free. And these can definitely give you more exposure as well as traffic to your products. And additionally, um, I believe that... Um, like the US marketplace has been an established marketplace for a very long time. So a lot of sellers that have already been, if you are a new seller, it's very hard to break into that market. However, if you are considering to expand to a new marketplace like Singapore, um, it's actually a very good chance for you because we have recently launched in only last year. So it's actually easy for you to get into this marketplace and slowly ramp up your sales as well. US marketplace. Right. Um, Jason, you sell on Amazon US and Singapore as well. Um, do you want to add um, to Geraldine's um, you know, answer over here? And uh, what is your experience? Of course, the US marketplace is huge. It's the biggest marketplace um, for, for Amazon, way bigger than any other marketplace. But uh, what has your experience been? Well, I'm actually pretty excited about uh, Amazon SG because um, I just see the huge potential and I think it getting in at this early phase of uh, Amazon's rollout um, is definitely uh, a, a great advantage that should not be wasted. Um, of course, the sales are smaller. Uh, however, I'll um, sort of, I am not using FBA in Singapore yet which I'm sort of kicking myself in the backside currently. Uh, after hearing Geraldine's presentation, I'm like, whoa, I need to make sure I'm using the FBA services in Singapore uh, uh, and get signed up for some of these deals. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so let's take uh, some more questions over here. So how will they support new sellers trying to get started? 
So um, it looks like Geraldine's connection is a bit um, unstable. So Alvin, do you want to yep. take this question? Sure. No, no worries. So I think in terms of new support, definitely there will be account manager like myself and Geraldine supporting new sellers to, to guide them through the onboarding process. And definitely there are very exciting campaigns and events that is coming up in Singapore that we will inform selling partners to participate if we realize that you have a relevant um, uh, selection. So quote an example, we understand about this COVID situation that we have uh, currently. So just two weeks back, we are pushing out a lot of our home essential products, work from home products. And we do have a lot of sellers having relevant selections like a wet cam, desk, uh, desk uh, stationary desk, equipment. We push them up to be featured on campaigns and these are free of charge because we wanted to help selling partners as well. So I think there are really a lot of supports and initiative in Singapore. Uh, in Singapore to, to help selling partners to get exposure and to ramp up your skills. And I think relating back to the earlier question, I think it's more about a first mover advantage as well. I, I do agree that Singapore is still uh, relatively new and we are growing, but take it as a take it as a, a growing stage which Amazon grew your business and we are the first in Amazon is the Singapore is the first stop of uh, Southeast Asia region understand about Southeast Asia region. And I think there is a huge potential within this region and in Singapore as well. Yeah, I totally agree. There are so many other markets in uh, Southeast Asia and in Thailand, Vietnam. So Singapore can really be a gateway for people who want to, uh, who have a, a good brand and they want to reach to reach out to customers in Southeast Asia. Um, okay, let's take the other question now. So is there a tool like Jungle Scout for checking data on particular products, how to sell, etc.? So Geraldine, do you want to take this? Uh, yeah, sorry, my connection was really bad just now. But <laughs> anyway, so regarding um the current tools, we do not actually have any tools like Jungle Scout or Helium 10 that is integrated with um the Singapore marketplace yet. However, we do actually have got weekly selection guidance as well as um monthly selection guidance on the top product categories as well as top searches on Singapore that we share with our selling partners. Um, from time to time. So these are actually some of the helpful materials that I believe will be similar to Jungle Scout or Helium 10. But these are some of the current tools or materials that are available for sellers currently. Okay, awesome. And um, I have talked to Bradley of Helium 10 and I think Amazon Singapore is also going to be talking to, to Helium 10. So if you guys want to see data from Amazon Singapore in Helium 10, what I would suggest is go to the Helium 10 Facebook group and then make a comment over there and ask Bradley to, <laughs> to ask the team over there to add, add data um, to Helium 10. Because I think one of their concerns is that the volume and demand is not that high. So if they see a lot of demand, then uh, of course they will put in the, the effort to add data to Helium 10. Okay, um, are we able to register our brand in Amazon SG and use an Amazon US marketplace as well? Yep, so regarding brand registry, in different marketplaces, you will have to enroll in the two different marketplaces if you are planning to uh, be brand registered. And however, if you are already set up in one marketplace, it will actually be uh, quite easy for you to leverage on that. And regarding like A plus content, we do have cross country copying of these A plus content available. So if as long as it's already approved in one marketplace, it will be easy for you to do that in the other marketplace after you enroll in brand registry. However, um, with regards to brand protection, let's say in the Singapore marketplace, you will actually have to be Singapore a uh, Singapore trademark registered company to get brand protect protected. Otherwise, you will uh, get the feature of the A plus content. Okay, so just to clarify, uh, I could be uh, registered, like I could have a trademark in the US and I can apply for brand registry in Amazon SG based on the US trademark, right? Yeah, that's right. However, okay. Okay. you will only get the A plus content feature, but not right. brand protection. Mm. Right, yeah, makes sense. Okay, are you able to FBA in USA and products sent to Singapore customers or would you have to FBA in Singapore also? Yeah, so I believe um, this seller is asking if products from um, 
that are in the FBA warehouse in USA can be shipped to customers in Singapore? So the answer would be no, because um, if you are using FBA in Singapore, you will have to send it to the fulfillment center in Singapore. And also because the FN SKU um, barcode labels are actually different and unique to different marketplaces. So in this case, if you are using FBA, you have to send it to the fulfillment center in Singapore. Yeah. And it makes sense, of course, because uh, it'll take a lot of time to ship products from the US to Singapore. Better if they're here, they're shipped in a few days. Um, okay. What are some tips that you have for new sellers? Yes. So maybe for new sellers, one of the first thing that I would definitely recommend is to improve optimize your product listings. So in terms of your bullet points, product detail pages, these are definitely very important for you. And secondly, if you are a new seller who is trying to get traffic to your products, you know, um, do you can send in a minimum inventory that meets the deal requirements into the fulfillment center. So at least you can run for deals and do make good use of the free deals exposure that you have as well as an FBA seller because that can help to drive traffic to your products and also, and from there you can gather more reviews and ratings that will eventually help to build your sales. So these are some of the tips that I have for new sellers. So and also be patient because and when you list a product it will need time for um, customers to purchase as well. So be patient. Okay, awesome. All right, let me see if there are any questions here that we can take. So Claire is saying, thanks, Geraldine. That was excellent. Yes, that was a very good presentation, really. Um, okay, so uh, Liliane is asking, I tried to register before and it's stuck for quite some time. Now I'm under verification. How to make sure I can get free membership? I think I register under Amazon.com link and not SG link. Yep. So maybe I can address this question. So if you are having any registration issues and it is actually not for the .sg link, you can first try to go to sellercentral.amazon.sg and register once again. And if not, if you are still facing issues with that, you can try to log in and register with another email address for the Singapore Marketplace because I believe that you were having issues with the wrong marketplace initially as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so Leanna is asking, if you're approved for Amazon now but haven't started selling, do you still need to get approved? Um, yes. I'm not sure if, you're, if you are currently approved in the US marketplace or the SG marketplace, but if you have already passed seller identity verification, you should be able to list your products already. And uh, let's say if you have actually got an approval a long time ago, but you didn't actually get started on your account, you can still try to log in and list your products. It should be okay. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, Michael's asking, how would shipping costs be calculated for an overseas order and how would it be fulfilled from SG, please? So overseas order. So like if somebody was in Indonesia, let's say, and went to Amazon SG and bought uh, something. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I would like to clarify once again that, um, you know, for Amazon.sg, we are only shipping to Singapore customers. So even if you are um, a customer that is from overseas, you wouldn't be able to purchase from Amazon.sg. So in that case, shipping costs will, will not be calculated for that because we will only be shipping to Singapore registered addresses. Right. And that's for FBA, right? But um, for Merchant Fulfilled, they can ship anywhere, right? Is that correct? Or uh, No, currently only Singapore yeah. registered only address. Singapore. Mm. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, what is GST? So that's the goods and services tax. Yeah, so that's the goods and services tax in Singapore. And it is 7% in Singapore. So it's similar to like the taxes in like VAT, but in Singapore, we call it like GST. Um, okay, so I tried to ask Seller Central SG, but no response. I was asked to provide credit card during registration. When will you open Indonesia market? So I think this question, um, it's, it's a bit difficult to answer. 
Okay, Raj, saying so for deal submission, since it is a manual process, how does Amazon SG choose our submission? In my case, no response from either Geraldine or Alvin. What's next? Okay, Raj. Okay. Mm. If you are current, okay, so maybe I'll answer the first part of the question first. So for due submission, right, so for due submission, yes, currently it is a manual process where you have to uh, fill in a due template and send it into your account managers. <clears throat> and currently the uh, your deals will actually be nominated or chosen as long as you meet the minimum due requirements, such as having your, um, having like, at least three to four star ratings if you're running as a best deal and uh, having the required minimum inventory in the fulfillment center. So as long as your ASINs meet these deals requirements, you will be eligible to get deals and the deal start date and end date will actually be subjected to the deals team's um, deals team's decision on that however your deals price you can actually be decided by you so moving on to the next question if you are still not getting any response from either elvin and i please send another email to us again and apologies for that we will actually reach out to you yeah let's just uh, let me just add one more thing raj i recall we met during before the the COVID situation and, and met in the office so sorry about not, not getting back drop us an email we will follow up with you perhaps it might be just a uh, um, randomly is assigned to one of subfolders. So reach out to us again and uh, definitely we will get back to you. Yep. Okay, so Anand is asking, do we need extra insurances to sell in Singapore to cover any product liabilities? Um, can you answer that? Yep. Okay, so I think in terms of that, um, insurance will actually be covered when uh, you work with your IOS IOR service provider to uh, ship your products over to Singapore. So in terms of the, um, like what I mentioned earlier, as long as the total value of your good exceeds $400, you will have to engage an IOR service provider. So these $400 will include the insurance costs, the total value of your good, as well as shipping costs. So these will all be covered when, um, and you can work closely with your IOR service provider to understand more about that. Right. I think he wasn't asking about shipping insurance as much as uh, product liability because like in this, some marketplaces have product liability insurance requirements from Amazon. Does, so does Amazon SG uh, have uh, require sellers to have product liability insurance or is that just the seller's personal responsibility? Yeah, I believe mm, if that's the case, I will actually have to look into this question further and maybe Alvin, will you be able to answer that? Sure. To the to the best of our uh, ability, we do not um, have come across cases that need product liability. Perhaps what Jason mentioned earlier are special products, example medical products that really have such a requirement that we are currently not aware of. So if if you can just reach out directly, let us check with the regulation uh, internal team and get back to you. Perhaps um, there are really such a requirement for specialized product that uh, we have we have not um, we have not uh, seller uh, shared with us yet. So definitely reach out to us and we will be able to check and get back to you yeah but regardless of whether or not this is an amazon requirement i think if you are selling a sensitive kind of product you should have product liability um, anyways i think that's just good business practice okay where is the fulfillment center location is that something you guys can answer or yeah, the yeah, Human Center is actually located in the west side of Singapore in if um it's like in the Jurong Jukun area. Okay. Um okay, I'll I've ordered, yeah, I jumped in. Ahead. I've ordered yeah. uh I've been an Amazon SG Prime member uh when I was in Singapore a couple of months ago. So uh when I order, then what happens is the moment you order amazon shows you what time the thing is going to be picked up the moment the driver picks it up uh, on the app is a gps uh, map and it shows where the driver is like every minute yeah <laughs> yeah and it's on time so i mean from, I've, I've, yeah. yeah i've ordered so from there you can see where the warehouse is <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, are sellers based in Singapore able to do a DIY drop off at Amazon's fulfillment center or must we use inbound shipping service? Yeah, so I, yes, you can actually do a DIY drop off at Amazon's fulfillment center. However, there are certain safety regulations that you must follow, for instance, wearing covered shoes and 
stuff like that. So if you are choosing to drop off at the fulfillment center yourself, please reach out to your account manager so that we can share with you what are the safety measures and make sure that you will not be turned away at the uh, fulfillment center. Okay. Yeah, just That's wanted to add, uh, sorry, just yeah. wanted to add a point. So there are uh, operating time, uh, nine to five, nine a.m. to five p.m. and try to avoid lunch time between twelve to two p.m. So there's additional thing to take note if you were to deliver on your own. Yep. Okay. If you live in Singapore, do you need to register with Accra prior to registering with Amazon SG? Okay. So if you live in Singapore, regarding like business registration similar to what I shared earlier you only have to register for a GST or a business entity if you foresee yourself to earn more than 1 million Singapore dollars in a calendar year otherwise you do not have to do that before you sell on Amazon yeah. okay. so you can sell in Amazon SG as an individual yeah, yeah. or in your personal name um, okay, let me see if there are any more relevant questions over here. My first shipment on the way to... Okay, so my first shipment is on the way to US FBA. Can I sell in Amazon SG? Okay, so maybe uh, similar to the answers that I have given earlier, like you will have to ship your products to Amazon SG even if you're using FBA because you will not be able to ship your products from US over to Singapore. Right. Yeah. Okay, so Samuel is asking, sorry, it's covering your uh, video here. So are there any pricing restrictions? If I port over my listings from Amazon US to SG, am I able to set any price? If I sell my product on my own site or other SG-based e-commerce marketplaces, must my Amazon SG price be the same? Right. So maybe um, to answer these questions on pricing restrictions, there are no specific pricing restrictions. However, what we usually suggest to our sellers is that if you are selling in many different uh, e-commerce platforms as well as your own website, um, it definitely makes sense for you to make sure that the prices are uniform across. Otherwise, uh, customers will do a price comparison and they will, you know, they may not buy from uh, websites that have a higher pricing so this is just something for you to take note of however there are no there are no specific pricing restrictions on uh, .sg okay so jason is saying i'm interested to hear jason tay's experience so jason hold on for that we'll be we'll be uh, doing a separate q a with jason in just a couple of minutes here let's just uh, take some final questions and then we'll let geraldine and alvin um leave um, okay, so is there is the enterprise booster for Singapore details out yet? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, let Maybe Jardine, let me let me do it since I'm on this project. So um, yes, we are working closely with Enterprise Singapore regarding the e-commerce uh, booster pack. So we have a online application from that um, you have to fill out if you are interested to really check with ESG on your eligibility and then we will communicate um, further communication with you so perhaps after this uh, webinar I can share the online application form with the team and they will share across with you so that you can you can be in the loop and if you are if you are a Singapore registered company and meet all the requirement by ESG go ahead and leverage on the ground and expand your business in Singapore so for those who are not based in Singapore uh, apologize this is a Singapore initiative to support uh, retailers in Singapore to expand their business online. Yep. So if you are a Singapore-based business, reach out and we'll be glad to support you. Yeah. And we'll also be sending a version of uh, Geraldine's slides to everybody who registered uh, for this webinar. In, in case you haven't yet registered and you want uh, the slides, not the exact slides that she shared, she shared but another version, um, you can sign up at uh, theasianseller.com and the link is also in the post description. So let's just take a few last questions and then we'll let you go, uh, Geraldine and Alvin. So, okay, um, I have an issue with the link account of US to Singapore. Where can I get help? Yep, I believe that this is under the sell globally option. So if you are having issues with that, you can try to register via services.amazon.sg. If not, please reach out to your account managers. Okay, you can reach out to our email address. Let me just share with you again. Amazon seller SG at amazon.sg. So please reach out to us and we will assist you. Okay. Can I just uh, quickly show the email address here? So you said Amazon? Amazon seller SG at amazon.sg. Okay, let me see. 
just I just send it over. <laughs> okay. So let me see. Amazon seller sg at amazon.sg. Okay, yeah. so this is the email address. In case you guys have any questions, you can um, send it, send your questions over here. Okay, let me see if there are any questions. And then, okay. Does SG have the ability, like USA, to promote for reviews? It is $60 in USA. Yeah, I think this is the early reviewer program, if I'm not wrong. So yeah. this is actually not a feature available in Singapore yet. However, um, you know, if because deals... Act is actually free right now. So that is one way you can actually get reviews if you run your products as a deal and it is actually free where you don't have to pay any amount of money. So this feature is not available, but you can run as a deal. I have a okay. quick question. Uh, yeah. Maybe why Joe is asking this. Uh, so if you create a new listing on Amazon SG and it has zero reviews, uh, does that make it mm. ineligible for the deals then? Okay, no. So for deals, even if you are you have a new listing with zero reviews, you will still be eligible for the deals. So that wouldn't be a worry for new sellers with new listings. Okay, so then the advantage of porting over from the US or some other marketplace would be you carry over the reviews as well. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Ah, okay. Cool. Okay, last question here. So is there an Amazon training online to go through the process that I can attend? Um, with Jason. Oh yeah. So maybe for uh, the current Amazon training. So for Amazon Singapore itself, we actually offer weekly webinars that you can attend where we talk about FBA and we do a walkthrough step by step on how you can create your FBA shipments. So these are some uh, available video trainings that you can attend on our end. And other than that, like what I mentioned, we also share like weekly selection guidance as well as um, what are some of the top categories. So these are some materials that you will obtain with, as long as you register for a selling account on Amazon Singapore. So maybe regarding Amazon training, maybe Jason and Megla can share more about that further. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, I run an Amazon training uh, course. So it's a live webinar, two full days, followed by one-to-one -one, uh, coaching, four sessions. Uh, so I think like uh, Geraldine... Like you've watched, she just did a great presentation. So the online training from or webinars from Amazon are great for um, technical and administrative issues, like how to register an account, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then the real keys to how do you then actually make this work instead of just like, because anybody can register an account, but whether you end up making any sales or not, uh, depending on what you sell and how you list, uh, that's a whole different story. So yeah, if you're interested in that, I think Megla will just stick the link uh, to the training in the show notes or in the comments on Facebook. So that's jasontayonline.com. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I just wanted to add. So besides the administrative part, I think from time to time, like just uh, uh early this month, we had a training on product listing and IDQ. So for sellers in Singapore, I think there's some new initiative from the Singapore team to really help sellers in terms of product listings, some of the things that you can improve on Amazon. So sign up now so that we can share with you regular updates or the focus for the month that we can invite you in the webinar to improve your listing as well. Yeah, and you guys also do monthly uh, workshops for, uh, you know, s select sellers. And I presented at those workshops and the last one was, of course, done online. So I think that's the great initiative as well. And I think some people are watching here like Raj and all, they have attended your workshops too. So that's pretty incredible. Um, okay, so yeah. Um, hi, Chris. <laughs> Chris is saying super informative. So, um, okay. Thank you so much, Geraldine and Alvin. Uh, for uh, for your time and for sharing all of this information and for giving an overview of how people can start selling in Amazon SG. Uh, I'm, I, I think this is a super exciting new marketplace and um, um, everybody who's already selling in Amazon, it just, it's just a no-brainer to uh, port over your listings over here and send some inventory to FBA Singapore. So Geraldine, Alvin, we will let you go. Um, thank you once again for your time and um, for the information you shared and we will see you around. And um, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Megla. Thanks, Jason. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you all. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Stay on. safe. Yeah. Bye, -bye. Yeah, Bye bye. Okay. So now we're going to continue this session, and uh, Jason and I are going to be answering some of your 
uh, you know, generic questions about selling on Singapore. And Jason will also be sharing his experiences selling on Amazon Singapore. And we're also going to be taking some questions that were submitted by you guys when you registered uh, that, uh, you know, specifically Amazon uh, would not be able to answer. So Jason, before we get to the questions, why don't you tell us about yourself? Give us a bit of background, um, you know, your story and um, how long you've been selling on Amazon US and Singapore. All right. Uh, so hi, everyone. Um, so I started selling on Amazon late 2013 and started on the dot com. Uh, I had zero background in selling anything online or selling anything at all. I used to be a history teacher. And uh, so since uh, so after starting selling on the dot com uh, did pretty well, I suppose uh, my first couple of products, one worked, one didn't. And that uh, really was a blessing in disguise, helped me to really analyze uh, why things work and why they don't. Uh, and my first private label product then launched early 2014. And within about two months, I was that listing was in the top 1% in the beauty category. Uh, so sort of built on that. And then I started listing in the UK as well. And of course, most recently with Amazon opening up in Singapore, uh, I've also listed a couple of uh, SKUs just to check out uh, what the system is like, test the market kind of thing. Uh, so that's just a small percentage of what I sell in the US. I think the, the, the huge difference with selling on Amazon in Singapore versus the US is that there are actually real people uh, yeah. who actually sincerely want to help you. Uh, so I think in the last four to six months, I've probably gotten to know maybe uh, eight, nine, ten of Amazon's management team. Um, and uh, they pro they've e proactively reached out like, hey, we're going to launch in Singapore. Do you want to sell? Uh, can we help you like create the listing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that is very different and I guess refreshing compared to selling on the dot com where you are, uh, even if you are a billion dollar seller, right, you will just be a nameless, faceless person. Right. Uh, and uh, yep, so I think that's one huge difference. Uh, I haven't had that like phenomenal sales on Amazon SG, but I like earlier in the webinar I mentioned, uh, I, it's uh, I think a big part is because I haven't made use of FBA because uh, I was just testing it out. I, I only listed like very recently. Uh, I think if you do FBA, it's going to make a significant difference because with FBA, you get the one day shipping. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if they order at the right time, like within working hours or something, uh, it could be two hour shipping. Uh, and where I when I'm in Singapore, where I live, uh, every time I, I go to a recycle bin like three times a week or something right, uh, to put stuff, and I always see Amazon packaging at the recycling like area. Uh, so I actually take pictures every time I go there, like, whoa, okay, look at these <laughs> Amazon packages. Um, and so I think, yeah, now's a great time. Uh, the last time I checked with Amazon, there were less, if I'm not wrong, uh, there were only about several hundred sellers listed. Um, so uh, if you get in now, you'll be like the first thousand sellers or something maybe. Yeah, and you, um, you have the first, uh, the early mover advantage for sure. That's right. So uh, yeah. there, are, there are pros and cons to that, of course. <clears throat> Number one, how I see it uh, as, I, as an observer right, and participant, is that Amazon's not really pushing the marketing to the consumers very aggressively yet. And one of the reasons I, I can understand why, uh, it's because they want to grow <clears throat> the number of sellers and the number the range of product offerings. Because if there are not enough, if there isn't a wide enough range, and then they start marketing very aggressively, uh, radio, TV, internet marketing, and then people start going on to Amazon and they'll see like, oh, why is there like only two options for coffee beans? Yeah. Uh, uh, then that's not yeah going to be a very smart kind of um, 
tying to market. And so that's why Amazon is uh, reaching out and they're taking the effort, for example, to work with Megla, myself, to reach out to people like you on this webinar because they want to onboard more new sellers yeah. so that they can grow the product range. And then once the product range reaches, I don't know, a certain tipping point, that's when Amazon turns on their marketing machinery. And of course, Amazon has very deep pockets, right? Uh, um, once they start ramping up the advertising to on TV, on online, on radio, etc. Uh, I think, yeah, the, the sky's the limit. Of course, the other big thing that I'm actually looking forward to is um, with the, that same question some of you ask, when is or is Amazon going to um, have FBA to the rest of the Southeast Asian market? Because that's a huge market, 600 million population that's bigger than the States. And in terms of internet um, growth, adoption, as well as consumer spend online, uh, Southeast Asia is some of the fastest compounded annual growth rates uh, in the world. Mm. And so that's going to be very exciting. Uh, I think you would have observed that uh, Geraldine answered and said, not currently. For me, the keyword is currently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, they can't say anything officially. Uh, um, so I, I'm trying to read between the lines here, but it's my guess because uh, I I don't think it makes any sense for Amazon to just launch in Singapore with like barely 6 million kind of population. Uh if they are not planning to use Singapore as the launch pad or beach hit to get into the rest of Southeast Asia, which countries like Indonesia, 260 million population, second fastest uh, consumer um, spend growth rate for e-commerce in the world. Uh, countries like Thailand, uh, Philippines, also huge markets uh, where a lot of people are shopping online um, at uh, and growing at a very, very quick pace. So yeah, that's, I think, the advantage. Also right now, because there's so little red tape, like there are so few sellers on Amazon Singapore that there isn't even advertising yet on the back yeah. end. Um, there's no PPC, right? Yeah. Yep. So essentially you just list and then you want to promote, you reach out to Geraldine, Alvin, and run a deal. Uh, if you already have an established listing on, let's say, the .com, uh, you can port it over and yeah, just start straight off. If not, just create the listing from scratch. Of course, the disadvantage is if you uh, you start with zero social proof, no reviews. Uh, the other, fair, um, I guess, small advantage is in Singapore, there's only one fulfillment center. So you're not going to encounter like um, getting your shipments split up into multiple fulfillment centers. Um yeah right yeah that totally makes sense and uh of course it's a much smaller marketplace so you're not gonna you know expect to make um you know hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. but uh send in small uh you know a small batch first test things out see how it goes and uh um and then you know take it from there okay so let's take some questions here so claire is asking a very interesting question um oops mm. So culturally, the consumer will be seeking different types of products in the U.S. Can you speak to any major areas to be aware of that it's not a copy-paste of what works in the U.S. marketplace? So, Jason, what what have you experienced? I mean, you've been selling on both marketplaces um, as such. And, um, you know, what are some of the similarities and differences that you see? Yeah, fantastic question, Claire. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, I, this question is really interesting to me and I've given it quite a bit of thought because uh, I source products from multiple countries. So I have uh, I have products made in the US, I have products made in Australia, uh, I have products made in China, I've sold products made in India as well and I have coffee that's grown and roasted in Kenya. So uh, <laughs> um, because of that, uh, like with the Singapore marketplace, um, my opinion is you need to, I would focus on selling premium products. Uh, well, uh, by or maybe that's not an accurate description. What I mean by premium is uh, made in somewhere like uh, Australia, New Zealand, the US or Europe, 
as opposed to let's say um cheap electronics or mass manufactured goods made that say made in china and the reason for that is because singapore's a pretty uh, saturated uh, in terms of e-commerce marketplaces or platforms uh, even ebay could not make any headway in singapore back in ebay's heyday uh, and that's because uh, singapore has marketplaces if you're familiar like q10 lazada and shopee uh these i would say are the probably the big three incumbents uh, so lazada is uh, owned by alibaba and if you go install the Lazada shopping app and you put your address, just put a, go find a Singapore like postal code and put it in as the delivery address and then start uh, searching. You'll see that uh, there are many of the listings that show up in the results actually have the Taobao logo. Taobao is Alibaba's, uh, it's like the marketplace where everybody in China shops on. It's like uh, Amazon could not uh, displaced Taobao in China and gave up. Um, so the the issue is that buyers or shoppers in, in Singapore getting on the Lazada marketplace can access listings directly from ch- sellers in China who are listed on Taobao because of the Alibaba integration. And so they essentially get on practically free shipping uh, at China's prices uh, sent to Singapore. So if you're selling like typical made in China, uh, low cost of manufacturing kind of goods, I don't think you can compete because Singapore shoppers are also pretty price sensitive. They will, a lot of them will comparison shop. They'll go on Lazada, Shopee, Q10, uh, search on Google and go onto Amazon and see like, okay, is this listed on all the marketplaces and where can I get the best deal? Uh, they are always looking for like the, the best deal. Um, and so how I differentiate is I don't bother to list my made in China stuff on Singapore because uh, they can just buy it on Lazada <laughs> direct from the, the, the sellers in China. Um, so what I list would be um, more premium type products like um, that are uh, made in the US or in Australia or come directly from Kenya where the sellers from China cannot compete with me. Right, that totally makes sense. And I also feel that, uh, I mean, I'm just talking from the perspective of uh, a user, an online shopper. Um, I mean, I've used Lazada and, and uh, you know Amazon both, but um, I, I don't like waiting. So the, the only problem is mm. that when you shop on Lazada, mostly you have to wait uh, you know, a couple weeks, of weeks. weeks. Yeah, <laughs> before you get this. I think that is going to be a major advantage that Amazon has because they have their fulfillment center over here. and. Once there are enough products on Amazon, once the you know usage increases, um, I, I have a feeling that their market share will grow significantly. Yep. Um, just because I yeah I feel that you know people in Singapore are impatient; <laughs> they want true. their products today. <laughs> and um, so okay, let's take some other questions over here. So these are some questions that were submitted previously uh, when people registered. So do you anticipate more success with selling products sourced from say Australia rather than elsewhere in Asia, example, India? So you kind of address this question a little bit. So what you're saying is maybe not the, uh, you know, the cheap Chinese products or mass produced like silicone baking mats, for example, (laughs) or garlic presses, but more, um, more premium, more kind of value added products. So um, you yourself, you sell, uh, soaps, right? And you you uh, talk about this openly. So, what about products made in Australia or you know New Zealand? Yeah, absolutely. I think India as well, mm, because not a lot of sellers from India are on the consumer marketplaces, so that's fine. I think the yeah. only the the major issue is because Lazada is in Singapore, and Lazada is owned by Alibaba, and Alibaba also owns Taobao, uh, yeah. and they've linked the two. So you can buy like a, a rose gold wall clock for like less than ten Sing dollars. That's like six US dollars or something <laughs> shipped to Singapore. So that's going to be hard to compete against. Right. Okay. So how to find a reliable manufacturer who will assist you in making changes to an existing product? 
So it really depends on where you're looking uh, for this manufacturer and what kind of product it is. So if it is a product that uh, can be manufactured more competitively in, say, China, then you can use online directories such as Alibaba and Global Sources. Uh, look for suppliers there, contact suppliers, and uh, you know work with them to make modifications to an existing product. You can also uh, talk to suppliers in other countries, such as India, Vietnam. Of course, it depends on the product. If it's, for example, an electronics product, then you uh, in, then China is the better place to go to. But if it's more of a uh, you know, maybe a wooden-based product, metal-based product, or, or apparel, textiles. Those are the categories that India is, is quite specialized in, specifically things like organic cotton uh, or eco-friendly products. That Those are categories going very fast from India. So there's, yeah, there's no simple answer to this question. It really depends on the product <laughs> uh, and, and the country that you're looking for. In case you're interested in sourcing from India, I do have a Facebook group. Uh, just search for sourcing from India. Uh, Amazon FBA private label and uh, join that group. Okay, um, let's see how to find reliable supplier. I think that's something that we just covered. Uh, what's the appropriate categories for beading jewelry supplies? Beading jewelry supplies. Um, hmm. If you go to, if you're referring to on the Amazon Singapore marketplace, you can go to services.amazon.sg and then in the drop down at the top menu, there are two drop downs. You go to res. Uh, no, in the menu, there's uh, one of the menu items is category, and if you click that, uh, you can just um, see where it fits. It probably fits under. I was trying to see whether there's costume jewelry, but uh, it's not a big deal. I always tell people categories are not that big a deal. Uh, yeah, it, I'm sure you can find the appropriate category. Yeah. Okay, so this is not an easy question to answer. <laughs> What's the budget to start? And yeah, I'm not sure this specifically asking about .sg or, or, or US because of course the answer would, would vary, but how best can you answer this question, Jason? Um, you, depending on where you are, uh, the, the cost of listing something on Amazon, I mean, right down to the, the barest minimum is if you can get your hands on one piece of inventory, like one unit, <laughs> you can already list it on Amazon or and yeah anywhere and sell it uh, and try to sell it. So, uh, but of course, realistically, you want to treat it as um, starting and then growing a scalable business. Uh, again, you can still start small. Um, honestly, you can send in a few test units. For example, like Amazon SG, right? Uh, the professional selling fees waive till end of the year, and then um, the only things that you would have to pay for would be the product costs, which could be pretty minimal. Uh, and then, of course, when you send it in, if you send it into FBA, then that's the storage fee, which I think they showed was twelve dollars eighty four cents per cubic meter or per pallet. So I'm not sure if that's prorated if your your inventory is only the size of a shoebox. Um, and then the fulfillment fee. But the fulfillment fee, you don't need uh, capital for that. Uh, pe people often miscalculate that. Uh, the fulfillment fee or delivery to the customer if you use FBA, uh, it's not your upfront cost. It is mm -hmm. deducted from whatever the customer pays. Mm, so honestly, if, for example, you live in Singapore, you could literally just post something or drop something off at the fulfillment center and it would cost you next to nothing. Uh, if you're yeah. overseas, then it's essentially just the product and shipping costs. Yep. Okay, great. Um, what products do people buy in Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> everything <laughs> everything exactly yeah so i mean if you look at um i mean of course essentials i think increasingly more people are buying groceries and um uh, you know like daily essential items toilet paper <laughs> online as well although um yeah i mean for fruits and vegetables i feel that they're they prefer to buy uh, or many households prefer to buy fresh fruits and vegetables from wet markets so every day in the mornings you'll see um, you know, grandmothers and grandfathers going to the wet markets and, and buying fresh vegetables. 
But other than that, I feel that, um, you know, apparel, uh, I bought a lot of clothes online and jewelry and storage stuff and uh, ink cartridges, uh, headphones, <laughs> like uh, almost everything that I need to buy. I, I first think of, you know, okay, should I buy this online? Mm -hmm. The only... The only reason I go shopping on, uh, you know, to a mall nowadays is to, or maybe not nowadays, but <laughs> before COVID nineteen, was you know to to make it sort of um, maybe meet up with friends or go have lunch as well or go watch a movie and then do some shopping. But for I feel increasingly for my daily shopping and you know necessities and um, I, I'm increasingly shopping online. I don't know about you, Jason, and you know what what other people. What you've heard from other people in okay. Singapore. Here, but, yeah. Sure. Here's an interesting thing uh, to note about Singapore. Uh, the price of cars is ridiculously expensive. So if you are from a country like Australia or somewhere in Europe or in the US, you like you can buy a, a used car for like $2,000, $5,000 or whatever. But in Singapore, uh, how, uh, the price, for example, of a new Honda Civic or something or Toyota Corolla it's about a hundred thousand dollars, plus minus twenty k, depending. Uh, uh, so, the vast majority of the population actually uses public transport. Um, and this is anecdotal, but uh, I used to coach Japanese expats in English, so uh, I would ask them. So, what? How? What are your shopping habits? This was years ago, um, and they would say uh i shop both in store and online so i said so why do you shop online what do you buy online as opposed to in store and he said oh uh stuff like toilet paper <laughs> i know that's that's a thing now but that was this was like 15 years ago uh uh toilet paper diapers uh, bulky items uh so that was back then because if you're going to be taking a bus or the subway the train uh, to and fro, you're not going to want to lug like four packs of diapers and two like packs of toilet rolls. Uh, so a lot of people would then go online to shop. And then while they are shopping for the toilet roll, like in Singapore, I order a lot of groceries on something called Red Mart, which is a part of Lazada. Uh, I would order like my one or two packs of toilet rolls and then because I need to hit the $40 for free shipping <laughs> on Lazada mm -hmm. or like Red Mart. Uh, so I like, okay, I might as well add this like, I don't know, the some bleach or laundry detergent or uh, okay, I'll add like the muesli bars or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, just to hit like the $40. Um, so yeah, uh, that's something to take note of that um, people in Singapore take public transport and so uh, bulky items might actually work uh, as opposed to like ev every other guru and their dog is always saying like small and light blah 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 I always say if the margins are good go for the big items because nobody else is selling them um, and the other thing to note is that Singapore is very compact and uh, it's organized in what they call new towns so every new town is like a suburb or an S no, they call it an, a housing estate every housing estate has a giant mall okay <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, some some suburbs have like three giant malls uh, so uh, you have to realize that people do have easy access to shops so maybe if you can uh, source things that are a, a bit harder to find um, that you might not find in like a regular mall because the malls all have just regular chain stores like Casio watch store, the the sneaker store with Nike and Reebok and Adidas. So if you sell stuff that it's not going to be easily found in like a generic mall with all kinds of like just chain store or brand stores, uh, I think that's another thing to consider. And so like for me, I sell like one of the questions here are Singapore shoppers eco-conscious? I think there is a market for that. I've exhibited, for example, or I've been uh, because I have a brand of natural skincare, so I've been invited to exhibit a few times at uh, the Marina Bay Sands in Singapore, uh, where they hold uh, like annual green living kind of expo. 
Yeah, so all the 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 local brands that have um, eco friendly products. Uh, I would say I've exhibited at several of these trade fairs or trade shows, and the Green Living Expo is by far uh, has the most sales. Like by far, they beat like the baby fair. They beat like every other <laughs> fair. I okay. I can do like yeah, yeah a lot more on it. Yeah, the Green Fair. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So Bill in Mary are asking, what about brand registration? Will there be restrictions? Amazon.com have a bias for trademark brands. Sorry, this has already been covered. So as of now, there are no requirements as such to be brand registered to sell on Amazon.sg. But of course, I think um, it does make sense for you to be the brand registered because you get access to A plus content and it's easier to protect your listings. Um, do you want to add anything else to that, Jason? Uh, I don't think there's any like um, specifically um, restrictive thing regards to brands. But yeah. yeah, if you get brand registered and can do A plus content, I think that's that can be a significant uh, plus point. Of course, if you're not ready to get trademark, then you can just get started first. Yeah. I think some people uh, who were listing on Amazon.com were having issues where they were not able to register. Uh, oh yes, the brand that was what was that error five six something something. Yeah, five six five <laughs> five. Have you so heard about you, that? Yes, so five, six, five, uh, five, I've had quite a number of people contact me about that recently. So it's pretty uh, yeah. straightforward, I think. Uh, if you want to apply for GTIN exemption, uh, Amazon will say they need to s verify that you are a legitimate brand. Uh, and if you then are not trademark registered, they, they specifically say send them a picture of the product or the product and the packaging that has the brand permanently affixed on it. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is get a piece of packaging and have the brand printed on it or something and then take a picture and upload and you'll be approved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Arvind is asking, if doing international shipping to Amazon SG, will the seller have to take care of the customs? Is it a complicated process? So, uh, yeah, go ahead. You're, I think with all shipping, yes, uh, you are the seller. I think with all products, I always tell people, uh, you are the retailer, you are the brand owner, uh, and you are responsible for your product. So you are responsible for that shipping as well. So yes, you have to be responsible for everything. Amazon is essentially just a third party. Uh, FBA is just a third party warehouse that allows you to store your products. Uh, it's like a consignment warehouse. So they are not responsible in that sense for your stuff, for the customs, uh, for shipping, for anything. Right. And there are um, you know, service providers that you can work with in Singapore that uh, that will be the importer of record for you and they will manage the customs clearance and everything. So um, yeah, I think uh, Geraldine mentioned they do have a list of service providers and we can um, you know, link to that list in the post description and also in the email that we send out later. So you don't necessarily have to you know, have your own, you don't have to incorporate a company in Singapore and get a GST to get started. Okay, so thank you, Claire. So Kim is asking, is Singapore an eco-conscious market? So I think we addressed that a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm an EP holder, do I have to register for G10 before selling on Amazon? What is the tax situation? So if you're an EP holder, um, you can register your own company in Singapore if you want to. There is a process to do that. But you, of course, have to make sure that your there are no conflicts with your current employment contract. Um, because many times if you, if another company is sponsoring your employment pass, then they don't want you to be, you know, working for another company. So make sure that, you know, you don't have any issues with that, but otherwise it is possible to, to, um, um, you know, set up your own company. There's a specific way to do that. And there are agencies that can help with, uh, setting up your own company. And as an EP holder, because you're a Singapore resident, you can be a hundred percent shareholder. In a, in a company over here in Singapore. So G10 is a, is a different, I guess she means GST, a, not G10. Yeah, yeah, separate G10, issues. Yeah, yeah the separate issues. So maybe she's confused GST with G10. 
So G10 is basically when you get um, exemption from Amazon, and, and that means that you don't need uh, a, bar a barcode, um, a G10 to list your products on Amazon. So Laura, you can reach out to me separately in case uh, you have any more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lois is asking, do you know of any Singapore magazines, websites, et cetera, that give information on trends, hobbies, and sports? Hmm, interesting. Do you uh, have any recommendations? Not any in particular, but you can easily Google these things. Um, there are a few websites that I occasionally look at. Um, like that's one called the Smart Local. Yeah. Uh, I think I have a nephew who's one of the writers there. Uh, so they tackle like um, in trend topics of like what's hot, where, what to buy, what to eat kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so that, I, I get. Yes, not local. And then uh, what about this at mothership.sg? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I suspect yeah, so I, mother mothership is sort of like government linked. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can easily just Google. The only issue is if you're not in Singapore, then it will default. Like I think, for example, uh, Lewis is in, I, I'm not Australia. sure, maybe in Australia. Uh, so your results would default come out like um, wherever you're base centric. Uh, so what you can do is type like, uh, top shopping trends, but and Singapore in the search term, so that you can get um, more specific or relevant results. Right. Okay. So uh, Lee is asking: Is it easier to start for US or Singapore market? <laughs> Administratively, it's easier to start in the Singapore market. Uh, I think you can see the difference, like uh, with Geraldine there giving that uh, presentation. Uh, when you drop an email, it's either Geraldine or Alvin, or they have a team of uh, account managers uh, who respond. And the sign-up process for Singapore would be probably much more straightforward, although it requires the same documents. Uh, the, the issue with the US is because there are hundreds of thousands of people applying to sign up. So the identity verification is um, very much automated by a bot and sometimes and that, yeah, thousands of people actually get like, um, well, the bot does is not happy with your application and <laughs> thinks you are another bot. <laughs> and so people get into a lot of problems starting on the US market. Uh, however, I always say once you are familiar with any one of the, the Amazon marketplaces, it's all the other marketplaces are more or less the same. So it's very easy to expand onto another marketplace. The only issue is with taxes uh, and government regulations because like every country has their own regulations. Uh, so when you get your shipment in compliance with the local laws, uh, compliance with local taxation uh, requirements, that is the, the bigger like challenge. But back to Li Qi's question, I would actually just start with both. Yeah, exactly. And if you're based out of Singapore, you know, maybe it's easier, faster to just start on Singapore to get some experience and then yeah. quickly expand to, to the US. Absolutely. I think it's a no-brainer to just sign up for the Singapore marketplace anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Seeing as it's absolutely no cost. Uh, so there's all the potential with practically no risk. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so Laura is asking, what margin percentage should we be aiming for after Amazon fees and costs? You want to take that? So um, I think this is just, um, you know, it's similar to any Amazon marketplace. And uh, of course, it also depends on, um, you know, what is the retail price that your competitors are selling your products at and what, how much can you actually price that product at? Um, so I don't think there's any straight answer as such um, of course if you are selling a more premium product you will be able to charge higher for it and you might have more uh, you know margins whereas if you're selling a more commodity kind of product the margins would be lower yeah. but your volumes may be higher so yeah. I mean for me there's no straightforward answer yeah. as such but I mean it's yeah if you're if you're not making at least you know I don't know at a minimum 10 20 percent um, 
I feel then you're in trouble. You're in trouble, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there are many factors, like Magla said. Uh, one is what are you happy with, like both in terms of percentage and the quantum, the dollar amount. Uh, the other thing is um, the kind of product, as she mentioned, like the selling price. So if your product is selling like at $300 each or $100 each, a 20% margin would be pretty decent or very decent. But if your product is something that goes for like $10 each, then a 20% margin is going to be pretty dicey uh, or dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it just really depends on several uh, factors. Yeah. Okay, this is a great question from Ben. Given you can't use tools such as uh, Helium 10 to assess a product's viability, what ways would you suggest to assess which products to sell in Singapore? Okay, so first of all, I just want to give some background. I'll, I'm going to let Jason answer this question. But um, so actually, I have uh, the Singapore team has reached out to some of these tools, and uh, they want these tools to integrate into the Singapore marketplace. In fact, um, they asked me to introduce uh, you know Bradley from Helium Ten uh, to to them, and they're probably going to have a discussion. So. Um, if you guys are serious about selling in Amazon Singapore, seriously, go to Helium 10's Facebook group and, uh, and post bread. a message there <laughs> and say that you want uh, you know, data from the Singapore marketplace because once they have demand, then they will consider um, uh, you know, working on the marketplace. So I was serious about that earlier when I mentioned it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so Jason. Uh, yeah, so uh, without these tools that cover like Singapore and Australia. Um, like EM10 doesn't cover Australia at the moment too, the last I checked. Uh, yeah. What I do personally is, let's say if I like uh, for my products, what I do is I go onto Amazon and I search like the, the main keywords that I would associate with my products. And I look at what comes up like, okay, does this look competitive or not? Uh, and then I also go, typically I will go onto Lazada, uh, Q10, that's Q O O and number 10, like one zero. Uh, and I also go on to Shopee, uh, that's S H O P E E. And I search for the same things. Uh, that's how I do like sort of my competition landscape analysis uh, without a tool just to get a feel. Uh, and from that, I can see like, okay, uh, are there a lot of people like selling this and what's the market price? Like, am I able to? Uh, compete on this and some of these um, you can sort of also if the product appears on one of these like Shopee or whatever you can sort of get a very general gauge of the demand uh, some of them show like the number of sales some of them show the uh, number of all of them show the reviews so yeah you can gauge from that and if you see that the product is not on any of these marketplaces then that's better still I think yeah. And um, I think uh, Geraldine mentioned that the team sends out some data every week to uh, to re registered sellers. So that's definitely an advantage. And uh, maybe best sellers, even though for the US market, we generally don't look at the best sellers list. But for Amazon, I think you should go go look at the best sellers to see what products are, are doing well and how competitive they are. Uh, most likely, they're not going to be very competitive. For now, mm -hmm. I, I think as of now, most of the best sellers are a lot of the medical products and thermometers and things like that. So just be a bit cautious. But things like toys and um, stationery, office, those kinds of uh, categories you can consider. Okay, Prabhu, I'm a beginner. Can I start with Singapore instead of US market? Yes, definitely. It's easier, faster to start with the Singapore market, especially if you are based in Singapore, consider doing that. But send in a small shipment to test the market first. Um, Kelly, are they limiting shipments to 250 items now because of coronavirus? If so, will they open it up more items soon? So mm. I think Geraldine. That's hard to answer. Um, yeah. Geraldine mentioned the limitation, but I don't think she mentioned the reason. Uh, my yeah. guess is, well, there's only one fulfillment center. Uh, and just like Amazon US, uh, I remember when I started selling on Amazon US, the limitation was, I don't know, like 500 or 5,000 units. And then as your thing gains traction, they automatically just increase the limit. Uh, 
So I think if, like, for example, you started with 200, 250 uh, units in total, uh, and then they start to sell, uh, and if that the velocity is beyond 250 units per month, I'm pretty sure the system will then uh, automatically bump up that limit. Or again, you can reach out to the account management team to bump up that limit, as she mentioned. Right. Uh, Arun, isn't it harder to compete with Lazada and Shopee because of the Amazon fees? Um, yeah. I understand this where he's coming yeah. from because I sell on okay. all the marketplaces. <laughs> <laughs> so like with Lazada, Shopee, the referral fee is essentially like zero or 1% at the moment. And that's because like Shopee recent, uh, one or two years ago, listed on the New York Stock Exchange and they've raised like, I don't know, a lot, many, many hundreds of millions of dollars in venture capital and investment uh, money. Uh, so that's used to absorb like referral fees. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, so the, that's uh, so you you will have slightly lower margins when you sell on Amazon because of Amazon's referral fees. However, I think if you leverage on FBA, uh, because there aren't really many efficient third party logistics service providers in Singapore, I've been looking for one like for years. Uh, I've talked to the bosses of many logistics companies. Uh, um, 3PL and I've gone check their warehouse out and I've never not been able to find one that I'm happy with uh, so I think FBA has a huge advantage because they deliver to everyone uh, the delivery window is like two hours to one day if you are a prime customer in Singapore uh, so that's a huge advantage I've also talked to the drivers from when they come delivering my Amazon order in Singapore uh, and essentially the drivers are paid $25 per hour uh, so they just dash back and forth because Singapore is really small right it's 50 kilometers wide by about 20 something kilometers uh, high or tall uh, so everything is within like a 30-40 minute drive at most uh, so these drivers are just dashing around uh, delivering stuff um, so you get it really quick so that's the big advantage of how uh, uh, and that's how you compete against Lazada and Shopee because Lazada is tied up with Ninja Van. Uh, Ninja Van is like, uh, I hope I don't get sued by them. But it's like one of the <laughs> worst delivery companies like I've ever encountered. They lose so many shipments and I don't understand why in such a small geographical location, they take like two weeks to deliver something. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. Yeah, I totally agree. I yeah, I mean, I feel FBA is is totally worth it, and you know, you just whether it's in the US or or Singapore, I think that's one of the biggest advantages selling on Amazon. Okay, how to choose what products to sell? I'm a noob and haven't started. <laughs> wow, join Jason's course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, general ballpark. Uh, Magla did an interview with me also, uh, where I talked about. Um, the sales funnel, online sales funnel. Uh, you can find that in the Asian seller uh, Facebook group. And uh, essentially, you need to, you have to realize that whether it's selling on Amazon in the US, the, in Singapore, the UK, or Australia, or wherever, or, uh, all customers start by typing uh, what they want to buy into the search box. So the key to capturing sales is to first be able to. F um, compile or do the research and compile a list of the search terms, the keywords that customers are using. And then what I like to do is look for then the keywords that have that demand, but also are not saturated or have very low uh, competition or low number of suppliers. Or if there is competition, if they are very weak or poor. Uh, so it's very easy to uh, outrank them once you know how to use the keywords properly in your listing. Uh, so that's the basis. Right. Um, does Amazon allow us to sell global brands or do we need letter, letter of authorization? Uh, the answer is it depends. Uh, um, it really depends on the brand. Some brands have um, agreements with Amazon where they uh, require Amazon to enforce only authorized retailers. Uh, some brands don't and don't care. So there's no easy answer to this. There's also no list that Amazon keeps of, okay, these are the brands that require a letter of authorization. It's more, 
um, hit and miss. So you might be able to list something. Uh, like in the past, for example, uh, I was I was going to like the factory outlet uh, websites of Nike, Reebok, Adidas, uh, Saucony, and buying the shoes uh, from the outlet websites. So these would be like 70% off. And then I list them on Amazon at retail price. Uh, so like you buy something $70 and sell it, list it for 220 or something. Mm. Uh, for years, Amazon didn't care. Uh, and then Nike Adidas started signing agreements with Amazon. And then I got the notifications that uh, essentially you have one month, uh, giving you one month notice. And after the end of this month, nobody's allowed to sell Adidas uh, unless you have a letter of authorization. Yeah. So she's referring uh, so to beauty brands. It's the same for any brand. Uh, it's just a, an issue of whether the brand enforces it or not. So the brand could enforce it by signing an agreement with Amazon or if their brand registered, like for me, I do beauty brands. Uh, I do my own brand only uh, because I'm brand registered and I'm enrolled in a Amazon's Project Zero beta uh, program. Uh, I can If somebody jumps on my listing, and pretends to be selling my brand or anybody just jumps on my the listing that I, I it's not my listing uh, amazon's listing that i created uh i literally can go in check one box and remove them in one second as in i can remove them from the any seller from a listing that i'm the registered brand owner of uh, that's a program that amazon is beta testing right now for brand owners um so, so the your next question, how do you know what we can sell? You really, like I said, it's just hit and miss, uh, which yeah. is why I always teach people in the long run, if you really want to have a sustainable business, you need to create your own brands. Mm -hmm. Selling other people's brands, uh, it's not a solution uh, for me in the long run. Of course, there are some trading companies that make a living out of that, but I used to have 20 wholesale accounts of existing brands, like anything from matcha to beauty brands, uh, um, etc. And over time, all of them uh, rescinded or cancelled their authorized uh, retailer thing to anybody who are selling online because over time, they all decided to sell online themselves. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Uh, Romy is asking, I'm from Indonesia. I'm interested about your experience selling Kenyan coffee. What documents should I prepare to sell Indonesian coffee on Amazon SG? What is the general step to sell food on Amazon SG? Yeah, okay. I don't sell food on Amazon SG. I sell food. Uh, I sell the coffee on Amazon in the US. So uh, I can only... Un uh, I, I know in Singapore, there's something called the AVA. Uh, so I sell beauty in Singapore. So my beauty products need to be registered with the Health Sciences Authority, HSA, in Singapore. I have to pay an annual fee for that for each SKU. Uh, it's very minimal. I think it's like five dollars per SKU. Uh, and then for, um, of course, uh, to be re part of the registration is you need to declare like where it's made or how it's packaged. Blah 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 blah. Uh, label requirements. Uh, for food, uh, I think in Singapore that would be under the AVA. Uh, Agriculture and Veterinary something something authority. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh. So they have their labeling and safe food safety requirements. So you might want to check that out. Um, in the for the coffee in the US, uh, we had to get the uh, coffee producer to be FDA registered, and then um, all the packaging has to comply with US. Uh, food labeling requirements and then be uh, part of the FDA requirement in the US is you need to attend, uh, appoint a representative that is in the US so we have a company that we engage as our representative agent in the US and we have to pay them like I don't know a three or four figure sum per annum so yeah it's pretty steep uh, if you're just starting out and you want to do food products because there's a lot more safety um her regulations around those kinds of things. Right. And also, I think similar to the US market, uh, Singapore has a lot of, uh, you know, guidelines and certifications that you require for things like electronics, food, um, baby products. So they're very particular about those kinds of uh, categories. So 
just be sure that if you are selling any of those categories, you have uh, you understand the requirements, the certifications, and your product is not stuck in customs for some reason. Um, so it's I think very similar to um, to the U.S. Which department in Singapore do we approach to register a product, brand, or trademark? It's called IPOS, Intellectual Property Office of Singapore, equivalent of the United States Patent Trademark Office. Uh, so you go to ipos.gov.sg, I think. Uh, just search IPOS Singapore. Um, uh, because Singapore is, they're driving out this like DIY, everything is like e-services, like for everything, right? Uh, so that everything is processed real quick. Um, what they, uh, IPOS, I think just last quarter or six months ago, rolled out like an, um, an online DIY and roll register your trademark thingy. So I think it's like just over 200 sing dollars and you just fill in the information and you can register your, uh, submit your trademark registration online. Of course, there are pros and cons to that. Uh, pros being it's, that would be the lowest cost. The disadvantage would be if you are not IP trained, uh, you might not fill in some of the fields correctly. Uh, and if your application is not approved, essentially the admin fee, like uh, 200 some per trademark per class of goods would be uh, wasted in that sense. Yeah, because that's just the government admin fee. Whether you get approved or not, they would you, you would be charged that fee. Right. Uh, okay. I used a trademark yeah. service in Singapore to get my Singapore trademark registered. Uh, I can't remember the company. I think it's Corporate Guide. Is uh, If you search Corporate Guide Singapore or something like that. Okay. Um, cool. Let me just see if there are any more relevant questions. There are quite a few comments. Um, I saw a, cu a couple of questions about your training, Jason. Maybe we can talk about that. So Roger's sure. asking... Jason, when is your next training? And somebody else is asking, is your training PAC? Uh, um, no, my training is not PAC. Um, I think both yeah, are quite about different. Yeah, uh, about so what happened was, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. So just real quick. All righty. Here we go. All right. Is it up there? Whoa. It is, okay. but you see your desktop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me just. Okay. Uh, so here's my training page. Essentially, I, I did start off myself with the PAC. Uh, I only worked through, a, I worked through a couple of the modules and then started selling. Uh, and then over the years, I constantly had people outside the US uh, approach me for training. Um, I think because um, they found it hard to adapt some of the strategies uh, if you were not based in the US. Uh, and also because I had pivoted completely from, in the past I did online arbitrage, I did wholesale, order wholesale of existing brands. And then by 2016, I pivoted completely to 100% private label. Uh, also because uh, I've essentially created like over a thousand listings on Amazon, I think uh, between 2013 to 2016. Uh, and uh, I've had hits and misses and so I've learned to come up with a way to analyze and do stuff with a very low risk, uh, high probability of success kind of approach. Mm. My first private label, for example, started with a US $80 budget uh, that included 10 units, custom made packaging, uh, et cetera. Uh, that now just that single SKU that I started with uh, December 2013, I think, uh, that single SKU probably does, comfortably does like five figures just by itself uh, every month. And then from the SKU I've expanded, probably now we have about 50 SKUs. Um, okay, so the training, uh, I just wanted to go to the contents. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait. The training covers like several, um, it's to help you essentially create your own brand 
with an approach that minimizes your risk and maximizes your returns, uh, leveraging on Amazon's infrastructure. So that's their website as well as FBA to do that. I, I'm a very like risk averse kind of person who does a lot of analysis before I do anything before I pull the trigger. And so th these essentially are the contents like Megla has gone through this uh, herself and yeah. uh, as an attendee. So these are the areas I cover in uh, a two day live webinar with a small group. Uh, right now I'm shutting the webinar down when it hits 10 people because I don't like to deal with big groups. I don't want to have like 200 people sign up because uh, I want to be able uh, to spend time talking to each person. So the big part of it is, uh, this is the workflow essentially of how you get a product from start to finish. Um, first you understand how Amazon works and then you leverage on understanding how Amazon works as a search engine to research, analyze and choose what to sell, what not to sell. Once the keyword research has, uh, from there you uh, have shortlisted what is sellable and what's not, what's going to be low risk, uh, almost uh, an ID at least an 80, 90% uh, chance that it will take off. Then you go source for the thing. Most people get that like a uh, wrong way around or put the cart before the horse. Uh, so after I do the keyword research, it leads me to, okay, what are the potential products? Then we go look for the products. So then I, uh, we, like Megler is great resource for sourcing. I also share like the contacts with my agent in China. After you source your product, then you start, uh, you can consider putting it in what, how you want to package it. And then you need to create the listing. Only after I create the listing, then uh, yeah, I go order the product and ship it to Amazon. And then how do you launch and promote? So then what happened was I started off with like a two day class. And I realized after a couple of batches that people were still really uh, felt lost after the theory and then they put it into they were trying to put it into practice. And so I guess out of the kindness of my heart of trying to do justice, <laughs> uh, I added four one-to-one -one consultations as part of the package. So it's a training package that's not just like a two-day class. It includes four one-to-one -one consults. And the whole point of the one-to-one -one consults, it's like if you're learning to swim, for example, after you or drive, you've learned the basic theory now, as you get on the road or you jump in the water, then like, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> uh, there's these other cars zooming around. What's with, what do I do at the stoplight? Uh, that's then like having a coach uh, as you do the practical. Uh, so that package, uh, it's currently priced in Sing dollars. It's probably going to be the last round that I'm pricing in Sing dollars. I'm probably going to switch it to USD. Uh, but uh, if in the USD equivalent, it's around 900 US dollars for two full days, followed by four one-to-one -one, uh, online face to uh, Skype consultations or Zoom if you prefer. Uh, and then for those of like several, I see several of my students actually here, uh, you would know that if anybody private messages me, I answer like every single person. And you probably yeah. can tell from the rambling answers that I give very detailed answers. <laughs> <laughs> and also you you have your Facebook group. So I've seen yes. you respond to all of the questions there. And uh, even in the students' Facebook group, um, so you have one group with all of your you know past students. Yep. And yep. Uh, I think that's something that's uh, you know very beneficial. And of course, I have done Jason's course as well. So I highly recommend it. It's uh, uh, very comprehensive, especially if you're just starting out and you have no um, you know idea of where to start. It will give you a very, very strong foundation. And then the follow-up uh, sessions are really good as well because um, you, know, you, you, get, um, you get personalized attention from Jason. And of course, if you mention the Asian seller, when you sign up, then you get one additional <laughs> session with Jason. So uh, that's something that he has kindly done for our community. So yeah, and, and uh, Jason is probably the only Amazon guru, well, okay, not a guru, <laughs> or the only Amazon trainer in Singapore that Amazon themselves work with. Um, so highly, highly respected. And, uh, um, you know, of course, previously, Jason, your course was only for uh, people in Singapore because it yeah. is an in-person course. But yeah. I 
think that the big advantage now <laughs> uh, is that uh, you're doing it online, so anybody, uh, you know, any anywhere in the world can really uh, have access to the course. That's right. So I think and, that's pretty. Yep. The webinar portions are also recorded, so once you attend, yeah. you can rewatch uh, any sections that you want at your own time to just yeah go through that again. <laughs> Uh, exactly. I do have one upcoming run, <laughs> sorry, uh, yeah, that's on it? the 23rd and 24th of May. So that's, I think, in yeah less than 10 days time. I just opened that up. I'm sort of pretty ad hoc. So uh, I just like, <laughs> okay, uh, let's do that next weekend or something. <laughs> uh, so I think there are only like seven or I don't know, uh, definitely less than 10 spots available. Okay. Uh, so... If you're keen, then you can go ahead and sign up for that. And I've purposely held off like publicizing or marketing it for people, uh, partly for people who are attending this webinar. And then I'll probably give it like a day. And then tomorrow, I'm probably going to send it out to my mailing list. Uh, yeah. So if you want to register before that gets sent, sent out to like a few thousand people, then yeah. Okay. So jasontayonline.com, that's the website to go to in case anyone's interested in this course. So the next one is May 23rd to 24th. Highly recommended. Okay, awesome. Well, we've been going for two hours here. <laughs> well, Jason, thank you so much for your time and for patiently answering all of the questions here. I think we covered almost all questions. We probably left a few questions that were kind of repetitive, but I'll go back into the chat and uh, see if there are any other questions that we can answer. And uh, Geraldine and Alvin will also be looking at um, the, the comments over here and uh, seeing if they can answer any questions. And of course, if you guys have signed up for this webinar, you will be receiving um, Amazon slides. If you haven't signed up, you can still do that. The link to sign up is in the post description. It's at theasianseller.com. So sign up there and um, you will be sent the slides later today. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this webinar today. And uh, we hope you will start selling on Amazon.sg very, very soon. <laughs> All right. Any last words before we um, end this broadcast, Jason? Well, I'm personally really excited, especially after hearing Geraldine. Uh, yep. So... Yeah, I don't think I've ever met like uh, an Amazon team that is so keen and excited and willing and wanting to help uh, sellers. I think they are really, um, yeah, uh, sincere in that. So, yeah, absolutely. And I see, you know, Abel specifically, he is just um, so proactive and he's working at like 10, 11 p.m. at night. And oh, absolutely. Like, he answers questions on the weekend, like when I send him, when I send yeah, them exactly. stuff. So, uh, very, oh, very yeah. responsive. Yeah. One other thing, Re uh, if you do go check out like services.amazon.sg, I'm I was on the page as Geraldine was presenting because uh, I've never really looked at it in detail myself. But there's lots of useful info. Like people ask about uh, shipping and all that. They have a whole table, like a list of like, I don't know, a dozen shipping providers and all that. So, Right. Okay, services.amazon.sg, right? Mm -hmm. I'll include that link in the email that I send out to everyone. Um, and also, apart from helping um, people sell on Amazon SG, I think they're also the, the global selling team is very proactive in helping Amazon sellers, uh, sorry, sellers based in Singapore uh, and Australia and New Zealand sell that's on right. uh, the US marketplace. So that's yep. another um, you know, initiative that they have, and they're very helpful. And we will definitely be doing another webinar with, with that team, with the global selling <laughs> yes, team. Yes, that's right. So weeks and months <laughs> absolutely so if you're from uh australia new zealand or southeast asia excluding thailand uh, <laughs> and you sell in any of the north american marketplaces so that's dot com dot ca dot mx uh, uh the office that looks after sellers from this side of the world the asia pacific is based in singapore and like magla said they are super proactive i've seen them put in so much effort uh, to really try to help sellers with a lot of the issues and uh, 
they have proactively reached out to so many service providers like accountants, uh, um, tax consultants, shipping companies, and all that uh, to try to really help sellers from this side of the world um, with um, selling in the US. Yeah, absolutely. And they have uh, a Telegram group. So this is the URL, right, Jason? Services.amazon.sg? Uh, yes, that's right. Okay. So, so Megla just right. mentioned the Telegram group. Uh, yeah. That's... Um, so this is an initiative out of the Asia Pack office in Singapore for sellers. Uh, and uh, they have this pilot group uh, where they are in a Telegram chat with, uh, that's like WhatsApp chat with uh, sellers from this side of the world. Um, yeah. And just just taking a lot of initiative to really try to um, be on the ground uh, and in touch with sellers. Exactly. And of course, they get a lot of uh, you know questions from sellers that are like technical questions and about account sign up. And I find that they're so patient, you know, responding to all of those questions, even though it's not within their um, you know purview to to help sellers with those kind of things. But they're very patient and they direct sellers to the right uh, you know departments and and they point them in the right direction. I think they're just uh, I don't know how and they are actually expanding the team. I've seen their um, ads on LinkedIn, and they are actually expanding the team, hiring more account managers and um, other other staff and the team here. So definitely expanding and growing. Um, Absolutely, and they know what they're doing. Like it was really refreshing hearing Geraldine present. I personally, because yeah. I've encountered so many other um, staff that nah are not as competent as her. <laughs> exactly, she's amazing and. Uh, you know, we literally got hundreds of questions from everybody because um, like some people submitted multiple questions and there were almost uh, 200 people who signed up for the webinar. And so we had like, I don't know, 400 questions or so. And she went through each and every question and categorized them. And, you know, we went through the questions and we said, okay, these are the questions that we are already covering in the presentation. So let's take these additional questions. And so she was very thorough and I'm, I'm very appreciative of uh, the time and effort that she's put into doing this webinar for the community. Yeah. OK, awesome. So um, thank you very much again, all of you, for tuning in, for um, joining us here. Also, check out my podcast. I should probably do a small plug for <laughs> the Asian Seller as well. So uh, check out the AsianSeller.com. I do a podcast um, every week. And um, uh, the, the URL is the AsianSeller.com. Um, go check the podcast. I also have a section over there for um, offers and um, you know various um, discounts that I have um, for various tools and service providers. So check out the offers section at the AsianSeller.com in case you're looking for you know like Helium 10 or a, a payment solution like Payoneer. I've tied up with all of these service providers. And um, these are, of course, affiliate links, so I will be able to buy a coffee if you sign up for any of those uh, <laughs> uh, services over there. But it doesn't cost anything extra to you. And, uh, you know, you do get, uh, in most cases, you do get a, a nice deal. And I've, I only list service providers that I uh, know personally and I, I am confident of their services. So check out that curated list of service providers. All right. Thank you so much, Jason, and everybody joining in. Have a great weekend, and we will see you on the next webinar. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.